course, you know, what's on our minds right now here in Tobago is what's going on with this vessel that's overturned. And as you can see, we, we did get some news overnight as to what's happening. Um, it's been identified as the Gulf Stream. We have Mr. Alvin Douglas. He is, you know, one of the divers that's, that's there. He was only able to do one dive yesterday uh, to try to figure out, you know, what this vessel is and so on. And if if you want to get, um, I mean, I think we have that clip lined up um, because I was able to go outside yesterday to actually see what's going on with the vessel. And it's important to know that at the time that we went out was around midday. And at that point, even though there was notifications and there was news of this vessel being stuck there from about 7 o'clock in the morning, there were no coast guard there was no any there wasn't any other vessels around any other authorities around investigating the scene around midday so we have the clip now of um when we went out when my crew went out yesterday Sargassum seaweed mixed with thick oil is inundating the shores of Lambo. Fishermen on the bay were perplexed, having never encountered it before, and it caused an immediate problem. Well, it's the first time we actually see our oil spill in real life now, so we you know, want to know how they're cleaning it up. And Out at sea, it is much worse. Together with the president of the All Tobago Fisher Folk Association, Curtis Douglas, and several other fishermen, we ventured out to the vessel. And as you can see behind me is uh, this ship we don't know the identity of the ship we don't know where it came from all we know that it is stuck here on what is a reef right outside of cove reminiscent of moby dick waves crashed against the hull of the rusty ship from the surface of the water there is a no sign of life at this point around the vessel there are no identifying marks either there's no clue present to say how this vessel ended up here in tobago where it came from or anything at all it is a mystery what is happening now we are having a boat run ashore on a reef so basically it is really stuck the vessel is stuck approximately 200 meters from the shore not far from cove crack a popular diving spot for safety reasons we were not able to get too close to the vessel but we did notice oil continuously leaking from the side of the vessel how much oil is out there i cannot quantify it but it's a lot until it's rushing ashore look all my hands all on the boats in the water it's oil is oil ridden is oil bound and i don't think the massive of this oil has yet come have been let off it has an immediate and devastating impact on the area which is a sensitive spawning ground according to krishna thomas a fisherman from lambo for over 25 years we have the lagoon there where the harbor all the lobsters is a breeding ground for all the fishes the mammals and them that's come in there to feed because of the grass bed and the bait that's come up here to spawn so this is a bait area from here go straight down to behind crown pond by the airport for many years fishermen have always been concerned about what is to happen in tobago if there is an oil spill and unfortunately today this is the case and this is the reality that they are faced with i don't know what's going to be the position for we fishermen here because we are being very terribly affected by the spill concerning this oil and this boat here so we need to act and act now to retrieve and to protect and to safeguard what little we have still left from these reefs and from these mangroves era men are concerned all they can do at this point in time is look on and hope it does not get bad but it is uncertain how bad things would really get as the oil continues to leak from this unknown vessel i am candace jackson reporting for tobago updates television news from the atlantic ocean just outside of cove so there you have it just a little report and like i said at that point in time that we went out that was around midday there were no authorities in the area inspecting what's going on but we did have mr douglas go in there in the water dive to try to figure out the identity of the ship what he noticed though is that the reef there i mean the top of the ship is apparently uh broken off as well as there's a lot of debris on the seabed at this point in time but even worse is that the reef there's a lot of damage on the reef as that vessel remains there and um we got news also from tima this morning that they have uh they actually have begun they are mobilizing their resources uh to begin the cleanup plan to kick in from about eight so the cleanup plan 
should be starting right about now to see what can be done. But again, there's also the concern about identifying the vessel. Even though we have the name um, Gulfstream, we don't have the IMO number and so on. So when we looked it up on the marine uh, websites and so on, it was very difficult in trying to figure out or narrow down which ship it was because there are several ships with the name Gulfstream. So hopefully today with more dives and stuff, we will find out more information. But this is a huge problem that we have here in Tobago because as you heard from the fishermen that it is a very sensitive area and to give us a little perspective I'm bringing in here Mr. Junior Kwashi and he is a vice president of the All Tobago Fisher Folk Association and more importantly Mr. Kwashi is one of those people that actually did and uh, go through some training when it comes to what to do when there is an oil spill. So a special good morning and welcome to you, Mr. Kwashi. How are you doing? Good morning, Candice. Good morning. Good morning to the whole nation worldwide. It's nice to be here this morning again. Smiling, but not very smiling. Not a very smiling situation, yes. Now, this is something, like I mentioned, this is something that the fishermen have always been fearful of. What is to happen if there is an oil spill of any kind here in Tobago? Mm -hmm. So, do you take it away from this point? Candice, 2010, I went on a training program with the same oil spill, right, in Tobago. BPT did that program, same in Lambo, right? We did a three-day pro program if there are oil spill ever happen. And that oil spill is not something to take lightly. Right now, this, what happened here, come to have cancer in Tobago. Because first thing beginning, let me start with the boat. We don't know when the boat turned over, where it came from. That boat did not turn over there. Mm. That boat cannot turn there. They decided that boat cannot turn over there. It's not no if and but. That boat could be over 200 feet, 300 feet, 400 feet, and it cannot turn at 10 feet water. It's almost as if it was traveling overnight exactly. on Tuesday, undetected exactly. along the coastline because right. there's evidence, there's, there's, there's oil present throughout. Yes. Again, let us talk about the boat first. That boat, Whatever happened to it, we don't know. We need to find what is the boat problem, what is the name of the boat, who is the problem, who belongs to it. That is step one. Step two is that we cannot go just so. We have to have divers, not diver. Divers. Yes, so more right? than Mr. Alvin more Douglas. More than Mr. Douglas, right? We don't know where the Coast Guard is. We can't see because I have not seen them up to now. Something like is happening to Bigo and they're telling me the Coast Guard do have a boat could launch into Tobago to assist Tobago. Can this all this place a cancer for Tobago? It's not just the fishermen will be affected. The people down at that end especially going to get a sick from that oil. It's and just to put this into perspective about the Coast Guard, because when I contacted the Coast Guard, even when I took a talk to some of the officers that I know, they were stationed either at Scarborough or at Charlottesville and they couldn't do anything. They were just there stuck in their, they can't do their bases. They can't do anything because they, they don't have, have no a boat. boat. They have to have a boat, right? And here it is now, that boat, I believe that boat was drift apart for some days because if Belgium can get oil, Roxburgh get touch and come down the road, that means it's up and come down. Mm -hmm. And the kind of current that you're running right now, Candice, I don't see divers having an easy time down there. The crowd is very, very hard. Listen, if, hard. Any, if yesterday was any indication, because as you can see, you see the, you're, the, you're the up waves and down, were and like, up and down, it, right? it was pretty rough yesterday. And I could tell you that fishermen went out yesterday and had to turn back because I had current. Right? And that current is going to sweep that oil actually wrong to be go. If we do handle that, no. And we cannot just think of cove alone. We have to compete, start from up on the head, both sides, and come wrong. It's like a cleaning house. You can't have any bigger. You have some a corner and come out, right? Mm -hmm. And we need to sit down. I say we as fishermen, investors, well, I don't know what team I is, I can't say, but team are over boat, team are. But see, right? The people who were trained, call them out and let all hands get on deck, Candice. It is too drag foot. We sit down too long on this. I want to see action because this is going to affect Tobago very badly. Yesterday I got a call, I know what the call is. Where in Tobago can I bid when I come for Carnival weekend? Tobago get oil spill. Could somebody answer for me? We don't know. 24 hours gone. You know how far that oil could go? 
Yeah, let's put this into perspective because, like I said, we the first indication that there was something wrong was around seven o'clock exactly. yesterday morning. And know what? After eight. Yes. And you know what to put into cleanup. Right? The first time that that Mr. Douglas, like said, Mr. Douglas was only able to do one dive, and that was probably about three or four o'clock in yeah, the afternoon. That is, and peace out, get dark. Mr. Douglas alone cannot do that work. He need hands on deck. We need people to go there. No one man should not be going and dive there. If we're talking about health, we're talking about safety, we have to put things in place. Have four, five, six divers. Bring the coast guard, let the boat lift and that come up here. Let we come together and get this thing done. And why do you think it's taken so long even? Because we do have a response team because of our oil industry here mm -hmm. in Trinidad and Tobago. Of course, it's all based in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. But then why should it take so long for the, those help to come across here to Tobago? It's a long story that I can answer, Candice. That's that, that is over my pay grade, which I don't get pay, right? But I'm saying, the chief cried out, asked for help. It was told, it was said that um, some, some boats or boats come from Trinidad to the oil, to the cleanup or to assist, whatever. But Candice, where that boat is stuck, I don't see no none of those boats are going there so easily. The depth of the water has to come into consideration. First, in that depth of water, what they need to do is to get some tugs, Get that boat removed from me. So just to put it into perspective for those viewers who may not be familiar with the area, tell me about the geography of that area, the depth of the water, the reef, what's what's there? Candice, I see that breeding ground. I say breeding ground. All right, let me make it more clear for everybody to understand me. Um, when we say breeding ground, we talk about spoon, right? Fishes love, love to spoon in mangrove, grassy bed. And when we have an area like that behind Cove, right back to Crown Point, go back to the Book Reef, it's a place to be protected at all times. Right? Lobster, the fish, all spoon, and then they disperse. Right? That ground damage, two years from now, we're under pressure. Totally, because it will not go back now. It may take more than three years. We don't know how long they will take to move that boat from there. Right? That boat has to move from there, can this? It has to move first. And we have to have several teams because we have to have to come up on the hill and come down and go around. We cannot stop up behind Cove alone because once that oil, and not if, it disperses already. It starts to spread up and break up. Because we're not just talking about the oil here. We're also talking about the actual physical ship damaging the reef. Exactly. And from what Mr. Douglas said to me last night is that at least a quarter of the reef is damaged. It's it's actually grating out like the hard coral and that sort of thing. Yeah, but can just think about that boat stuck on a reef? That size of boat that you have there. Climbing from left to right, left to right, left to right. That going to break and break and break and break and break and break and keep on going. And we don't know what tide that boat was stuck there. If it's full tide or low tide. If it's stuck on full tide, problem to move it. If it's low tide, you have a chance because when low tide is stuck, when the high tide pulls it, you could afford to pull it. And we have to get bad, we have to get tugged. It's a real serious problem right now, Candice. Candice Tobago have a cancer, and the cancer is that boat down there with that oil. Hmm. We have to deal with that now. So, I don't know what is team plan, I can say. They have not speak to Atfa. Nobody has speak to Atfa about it, which I We are willing. To work with them in any way we can, because I know we're training here. All the members as far who nobody training to do the oil, of the oil spill. I know thing was launched at um, Almando. I don't know if it's still there. I can't say, right? But what about is rescue and clean up? It will be very hard on us because behind is real shallow. Shallow means shallow, right? And no big ship can go inside it. Yeah, like a small boats and all kind of things. So we have to sit down and mobilize, lace with at five, we see lace with at five, lace with the fisher folk. Let us come together because if you don't know there and you try to go to Candice, it's more disaster. Fishermen have to take you there, otherwise, they will not get nothing done because it will correct themselves and cause double trouble. Right? Those big boats will not go inside enough for sure. I ask him that. So then he has to still come back to the same small men. But first, we need to get divers on board, not Mr. Douglas alone. Please, don't kill the ghost of a lady going egg. Mr. Douglas and his team or team is with six, seven people, and we need to go there when the sun is up. Like, no, they shall be in the water already. But we, we have no boat here, we have no coast guard. I heard, I heard Chief said coast guard supposed to be on board, and I haven't seen them, I don't know. 
Okay, I said what I can understand. I really know. But I would like to see we do that now, right, now, right, now, right, now, right, now. Call in who know, bring everyone on board, and let us get this thing dealt with now. How big is this threat just to the livelihoods of this island? <laughs> and this, I say that cancer. To be big. Big not big, you know that table just 16 square miles. And if I ship that size pumping all them oil, look at the oil that coming from it. Right? When that break up and start to spread, it spread wrong to be going a second. It will not take long. The current right now, let me just say, for some reason, the current is going down. I'm sweeping across the Grenada. When you meet across the, you may meet an next speed at pushing back. The current doesn't go one way all the time. If you start with the current, you can swing toward the current, inshore or to sea, you go either way. It could leave from down there and it could sweep all the way back up to Scarborough, all the way back to the Bell Garden. It could go back up. And what the Bell Garden will go high up. The current is really one of the main factors we have to get into place and deal with it now. It's and now. how can it affect, how would it affect the fish and other marine creatures? Fish go run, fish go run, talk go run, young one got them, young one who carry on got dead. All that will happen. It will affect us very badly, can it? And men with engine. Please, all you don't go there. If all you go there, be extra careful. All that oil could damage your impulse, it could damage your engine. Going there, can this is very riskful, especially if you don't have the sea experience. Do not go there. If you see oil, stay away from it. Out in the ocean, stay away from it. Stay far. Can this, this thing need treatment? No. I think we need international help. Now, um, just before we go, just to speak to the people of Tobago in terms of fish. So I know, of course, there's going to be a concern. I know the chief secretary said, you know, I mean, <laughs> because the fishermen don't fish near shore, they go put out to sea, that that shouldn't be affected. But from your perspective, from Alpha's perspective. Candice, it's not the fishermen do fish close in shore. You must pass in shore to go to the ocean. And if in shore is affected, you will pass through it. And you are spreading it likewise. Right? And I will not tell no fishermen, Lambo, Crown Point, Carbo, Belgian, to go and see right now. But can us people in Tobago, um, fish? can we purchase? Yes, you could eat fish. The fish, the whole point of what is that, you have to make sure what you're eating is the right thing and the right fish. But, and this is where I'm in a mess right now. I'm asking, I'm appealing to everybody. Let us sit down and work this thing out. Bring Atfa on board, bring team on board, bring Coast Girl on board. We sit down, plan to help Tobago. This is Tobago business. Call on Trinidad, call on International. We have to call, let them call who they're supposed to call. Use your office chief, call who you have to call. Let everybody sit down, work this thing out. It is a cancer for Tobago. This all is spill. All is spill is a cancer. People of Tobago who don't know it is a cancer. Right? Or it's blue and just like that. Eh? Where is that oil on that show? Eh? Not that at the end of it. Eh? That is the beginning. All that had to clean up. Every ounce had to clean up. Every ounce. Because one little spit of oil again, more back on again. If I took a pass, a fish, a fish who have eggs in the belly pass that dead. Right? Lobster problem. I see this whole side here right now with problem. Serious, serious problem, Carly. Serious, serious problem. And I would like to know that please don't kill Mr. Douglas. Let Mr. Douglas and a team go down there. People, the water today is very heavy. Morning yesterday. I saw it already for the morning. Right? And Mr. Douglas, be careful. Don't make the kill the goose and hit the golden egg. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm saying. Yes, and of course, yes, a special um, good morning to our dear Mr. Alvin Douglas, who is doing human service. And I don't think we realize, I think he's like the only person that we have stationed in Tobago with any sort of experience or any kind of knowledge about how to deal with the, these emergencies underwater and so on. And um, yeah, oh, that's all I'm going to say on that for now. But yes, definitely we are grateful for him, but he alone can't do it. So... Thank you so much, Mr. Kwashi, for being on with us. This is certainly a story, viewers, that we are going to be tracking very, very closely as um, the days and the hours unfold. And hopefully we can have more details as to where this boat came from, who owns it, why is it in our waters, and what are we doing about it? Such very important questions because, again, the livelihood of 
fishermen and just us in Tobago, the health of our fish, the health of our reef, because again, there's a problem. If that reef is destroyed, then the shoreline there is open to uh, erosion, quicker erosion and so on as we experience storms. And it's a whole ripple effect. I don't think we really understand the ramifications of this vessel being stuck there on that reef just outside of Cove. I want him to say, you know, this is so nice, eh? We're talking about this Lambo to Cove. One of our main hotels is in the center of it. Hilton. Magdalena. Magdalena. Yes. Magdalena is right there. Right? Magdalena is right there between the target. Just think about that. Carnival time, tourists is here, flocking to Bigo. Let us all understand the pressure we are under. That's why I said to Bigo, is that cancer is all thing that cancer. We just start now. Get everybody on board. The fishermen, actually, everybody, all head on board. Time to call some deep people out. Thank you so much, Mr. Kwashi. And like I said, this is this this is gonna be a continuing story. All right, viewers, well, we gotta go for a quick break, but we'll be right back right after this.